What's up, guys? Welcome back. We took a short break, but we are back on the Homeless Crusade podcast with my boy Edens and my girl Marie. So, um, I know you guys went to Cape Town for this particular part of it. Like, I know the last time you were here, 2021? Yes. You didn't, you didn't travel as much? No, yeah, I didn't. we really couldn't because of COVID and everything. Oh, yeah, that was still fresh, yeah. Yeah, you guys, like, South Africa still had a lot of, like, strict rules. At that time, I believe, like, maybe a day before you arrived? Or day after you got here, they put the restrictions back on the alcohol where you couldn't buy alcohol anymore. Oh yeah, yeah so yeah. I remember I still bought a crap ton of alcohol just before you arrived for the Jeff strip, <laughs> and also they restrict like um, driving between the provinces. So we mm, I remember that. Yeah, we couldn't do anything. But you know, you guys were in Cape Town. How was Cape Town for the limited time that you were actually there? Cape Town was beautiful. Honestly, mm. um, uh, it's like it's like a, a mix of. I would say New York City, Miami, and LA. LA. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like so parts of it will give you that vibe. Yeah. Right? P- parts of it will give you that vibe. And and I was I was a little, I, I can't even say shocked. If I, I, I don't want to, I don't want it to come off like, okay, South Africa doesn't have modern cities or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, the place was very clean and, and, um, like what I expected was was very exceeded from. Oh, what you actually because you uh, you yeah. used to PE and how PE is and mm-hmm. Cape Town is vastly different. True, but I, I've I've seen I've seen videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've s- seen videos. I've seen you know pictures. But where we were, I I can I can completely imagine myself living in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. Like, you, know, no, you bring that up, um, like the difference between PE and Cape Town. So. I'll find a picture for you and I'll actually send it to you, but I'll, I'm sure Art will throw it in the edit. So where, where the provinces meet, like mm-hmm. the border, they're not on the national road. You guys probably took like the freeway all the way to Cape Town, I imagine, like through Sakama. Oh, did you fly up? Okay, flew. then you would never notice it. But the, in South Africa, there's more than one way to get to a place. So like you can either take the national road or you can do like the back road, like this more scenic route, if yeah, you want to call it that. which I wanted to do. Yeah. So, like, you know, we, we, we told you, because you said that the, um, it's the garden route. The, the, the route to Cape Town is called the garden route. But there's one point where, um, like, where you can actually tell the vast difference between the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape, where the road is tarred, right, uh-huh. all the way. But the road on the Western Cape side, compared to the road on the Eastern Cape side, there's literally, like, a line where the Western Cape road, like, you, it actually ends. And, like, the Western Cape road is, like, tarred beautifully. The tar is, like, black, and it's, like, smooth. It's nice. And then... It's like you're driving and it's like smooth and all of a sudden it's like, whoosh, you're like what the fuck, what happened? And then it's like you're on the Eastern Cape Road and oh, it's like falling apart. <laughs> it's, it's falling apart. I'll actually show you that because like there was a, there's a guy that made a TikTok video about it, but there was people who actually didn't want to take the, the main road to get to Cape Town or to like even to George, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And they were like, how? Like with a, with a board that says you are now leaving the Eastern Cape. When you get to that board, everything changes. <laughs> So like it's it's I think that's when it's when the the country like each province is run by like a different political party and then they like do things differently. But there's actually like a clear separation where there's like a line where the Eastern Cape ends and the Western Cape actually begins. Because yeah. I was surprised also at how much money is in Cape Town. There's a lot of money in Cape Town. Yeah. How much money is in Cape Town? Because it seemed like because it it was a, a BMW or an Audi or Mercedes mm. was a, a very common car. Mm-hmm. Like. On the street to the point where I asked uh, her cousin, uh, Jonathan, who I, we went to see, I asked mm-hmm. them, is there a factory here that makes these cars? Because mm-hmm. it, I see them so often, mm-hmm. but they must be cheap. For example, um, a Mercedes Benz is very expensive in the U.S., mm-hmm. but you go to like Germany where it's made, it's, it's, cheap. it's, a, it's a Toyota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, borderline. Yeah. <laughs> right? It was like, all right, we make this car here, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> right? Mm. But I, it felt like that. He's like, no, all these cars are imported. I'm like, then it was like, there's more. It seems like there's more wealth concentrated there than I'm used to seeing back home. Mm-hmm. Now that you're saying that, that, immediately taking me back to like VW. Yeah, that is right here. And that's like, there's so many but polos. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's actually we we have a factory. Have you ever heard of a place called Utnik? Yeah. It's just outside. Manisha's PE. from there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as you enter that. Town, yes, it is a town. As you enter that town, the first thing that you see is the VW plant, like factory okay. plant with that. And a lot of the export models that like the US and like, other countries get are made like right here. Yeah. But 
they're still expensive as hell, yeah. Okay. <laughs> not, they're not like cheaper, but it's it's easier to access them because the factory is right like there. right there, so okay. it's not that difficult. Um, and also, fun fact for you, because I'm sure you don't know that. Have you heard of a place in South Africa called East London? I have, yeah. We, there's a Mercedes-Benz factory there. Okay. Where they actually make the cars. Okay. So you would expect so to see a lot of Mercedes-Benz in East London. I probably do. I've, I was there recently. Like, okay, I say recently, but it, Candace always says that. I always say, oh, no, not long ago, or like the other day, but it was like six months ago. <laughs> that we did it. But we went up to visit one of my friends in October, and... It was the same thing. So as you enter the town, you've got to drive past the Vita, the Mercedes Benz like factory and stuff. So I, I know, and I know there's a Toyota factory in Durban. That I know. Okay. But I don't know about BMW. I know that we have a BMW dealership here, but there's a lot of wealth in Cape Town because Cape Town's one of the like in South Africa. It's like if you want to call it like a media capital. Yeah. So like a lot of things happen, like massive events, concerts. Um, TV shows get filmed there, like talk shows get filmed there. One of the most popular talk shows in South Africa, it's called Espresso. Okay. That's filmed in Cape Town, like on a rooftop of like this tall building. So there's certain scenes that they shoot in the balcony and you can see like Table Mountain in the background kind of thing. Okay. So Cape Town has a lot. Like I know, I don't know about the, uh, the concert that I know about, like Ed Sheeran, for example. Yeah. He's, he had two concerts in South Africa a couple of years back, one in Johannesburg, one in Cape Town, and that was it. Okay. Yeah. And Tamir was here not long ago, and she was yeah, also in, in Cape, Cape Town. Town. But Cape that's Town what a lot of Durban. people do because of how big Cape Town is mm. and because of it being a tourist attraction. Mm. Mm. Cape, um, Table Mountain, a lot of artists just go to either It's like our version of LA, Cape basically. Town. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely have to go back because uh, my time there was too short. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw, I felt like I saw a lot, but at the same time, mm, there's a lot it's more. It's like, there's a lot more. There's a lot I didn't see. Mm -hmm. I didn't see enough. <laughs> but even right. for me, as a South African, Cape Town was something different for me to explore as well. Mm. Because the last time I actually did anything in Cape Town, I believe I was like 18 years old. I was a kid. Mm. So I couldn't really do yeah, <laughs> as much as I... Yeah. yeah. And you were saying earlier on, before we filmed, like you, you watched the movie Four Corners. Yeah. And <laughs> like, how, wh what was it like to know that like you watched the movie and you were like, okay, cool. That's like the, the gang life in Cape Town. And you're like, wait, but I was just there. <laughs> and you, you know, you watched it while we were there. Oh, you watched it while you were in Cape Town? Yeah. Oh, damn. Literally That's like the perfect introduction the video. video. Like, no, if you want to watch the introduction video. Really, because before we, we even started watching the movie, um, uh, my friend's wife was like, well, yeah, the, the slang, even the slang, the, yeah. the gangsters use in the movies, like, typically, those, it's not slang like we typically use outside yeah, of that. Yeah, it's Cape Townian slang. Yeah. Cape Townian colored slang. Yeah. Like, and I was really trying to watch this uh, to understand, to see, you know, mm -hmm. colored life, colored. I mean, yes, a gangster movie, but all around it yeah. is regular people li living. So I, I really tried to watch and study the movie just, just so I could learn more about your background. Oh, okay. Like I, I, I did. I watched it, watched it. It's a colored <laughs> thing, yes, but it's not a PE thing. They yeah. Cape Colors are more. But they have their own culture, like very okay. different in comparison to, to us, to like okay. or oh, even any like, anywhere else. It's mm. like, it's, so it's like you know, New York versus like I don't know Alabama or something. Because essentially, yes. yeah. it's like it's like when you have African Americans from the South versus African Americans from yeah, New York. They right. they 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 all African Americans, but like the but culture down south. I can barely understand culture. them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, what did you say, bro? <laughs> yeah, I know they they and they they their language is. Is very rooted around Afrikaans mm. in Cape Town. Like in, in PE, you'll find way more like colored people who speak English predominantly. Okay. And in Afrikaans, it's like the ratio is flipped. Okay. There'll be more. They'll speak Afrikaans way, and even like they'll speak English, and then like they'll throw in Afrikaans words more regularly. Yeah. Even though they speak fluent English, so that's like a thing that. Yeah, yeah Haitians do that. We we call it Quinglish. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you we speak Creole, Creole and yeah. it's like English words missed in. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you have any? Because I know I, something that I said we need to do because we haven't done it. We need to get, like have a Gatsby with you before you leave. But did you eat any other like food in Cape Town that was like not like from a restaurant? Or did you not didn't get a no. chance? No, for we the most part, everything didn't. was continental. Yeah, because yeah. we were going we were going to chain restaurants. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, eating at the mall. Mm. So it was like things I can get at the US anyway. But what I have to say is that eating in South Africa is not the same as eating. in even though it's like, yep. okay, I can have a steak here and a steak over there. Mm -hmm. And then in the U.S., like, after a few hours, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry again. Yeah, maybe like yeah. two, right? three hours, you're hungry again. And then we had, we, we ate at Bosa, right? Yes. And uh, we was, we, it was like 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. 
and I was surprised how long it took for me to get hungry again. Because the food is real. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, like... For so me to have that type of steak in the U.S., I would have to pay so much fucking money. Yeah. <laughs> because by 5 p.m., we were still full. We were still full. When we oh, what time did you guys have lunch, like, at 12. 12. Oh, yeah, at yeah. 12. We had lunch at 12, and I had steak yeah. and vegetables. And not just that, we burnt energy and because we, we were walking, walking around. Around, walking around. And we were still full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, went see, we went to see the wheel. Can't do that, boss. We, and then mm. we were surprised. I'm like, oh, my God. That typically, I'd, I'd ask for a snack by now already. Mm. Cause I eat a lot. <laughs> it, was like, it was like I was surprised. I'm like, oh my god, this this is fulfilling. And the only time we ever remembered her and I ever remembered eating mm -hmm. something, and then it was very fulfilling, even though yeah. the portion wasn't that big. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a very expensive restaurant we went to for our anniversary. Like when you guys were in the states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was like okay, so it's for you to eat the good stuff, you have to pay money. You know, you have to pay yeah. money for them not to. To, to let the apple grow on the tree and not touch it. <laughs> it was like, yeah. It was like, oh, um, all we did was mm. we uh, planted it in the ground and we let it grow. On, on, on its own, yeah. On its own. And then we picked it. Yeah. <laughs> you paid more and money for that. And then we instead of put it in a packet and, and then you go. Yeah. yeah. We that's insane. No, I was, I was I wondered about that because like, so a lot of the things that you would find that we eat here, it's like, in because you were in Cape Town, it's very popular in Cape Town, like especially like um, they call it like the Malay dishes, but like things like you've had samosas before, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Like that, and like a whole lot of other things you'd find at like what we call uh, is it called takeaways in the US? Yeah. Called takeaways. So like when you just go and buy food over the counter, but it's like like the soul food kind of stuff where it's like greasy and so and like you know made with like like the curry type stuff. Yeah. A lot of it actually like mainly you can say that it originated originated there, and then like because people moved to different cities, they like brought the food and culture okay. with them. Like, have you ever had a cook sister before? No, I was literally Not just yet. telling my mother last and night, can we Sunday. please find cook sisters for today? I was oh, telling gosh. her that last night. If I She's like, oh, no, the pasta across the street sells it. I'm yeah. like, we need to get some. Yeah, we have to get some. Like, when we go, we need to get some because <laughs> that is, like, one of the... So, I don't know if they do have, like, weekly traditions in the U.S. at all. But, like, Marie will know because she grew up here. So, like, there's certain things that you would do certain days of the week like normally friday nights or normally like takeaway nights where people will get like pizzas or whatever like get the you know we got the kfc bucket the other day like that's yeah. that's like the friday food but sundays are reserved for a, something Sunday especially lunch. in colored households it's called the cook sister so yes. it's like um it's like a dough kind of thing but like yeah. the dough is not like you know like bread dough it's something similar to bread dough like in you know, like when you just make dough for like you're gonna make bread mm -hmm. but they make it differently like they add different stuff in and it gets fried but yeah. then it gets syruped afterwards we call it syruped so like they and make a coconut sometimes yeah, coconut yeah. like you know like the coconut shavings yeah so like it gets fried and then from there it gets moved over to like this little flying pan full of oil melted sugar oh like yeah. the syrup part yeah so Honestly, and then I'm it gets so rolled around and then from to, there it gets, to get it. It gets like dipped and like basically battered in in like the coconut shavings yeah. and then you're like cool it's well done so good i'm yeah, so it's, stuck it's on the name cook sisters yeah I'm it's stuck. just the name the cake sisters yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a different name for it but i can't remember the other name there is a different name if i did it if i knew you didn't have i would have asked idol's mother to oh, hook us up with some because she makes some amazing ones oh, she, she, makes brought like, some. she makes the cape malay style ones like the prop yeah. ones yeah. but the ones you'll have are probably going to be as decent as I, well I've had, I've had um a decent amount of, of south african um what ethnic yeah, food, what you some. call <laughs> ethnic food because yeah because because there's not a, a lot of South Africans around us, or mm -hmm. if they are, they're very spread out. Yeah, everyone comes together every time there's like a festival, mm. right? Because there's one lady that runs it where she has like a South African festival every year, mm -hmm. and Marie and I, it's like it's like we have to go mm -hmm. wherever it is. We yes, have we have to go. It's like mm -hmm. we, it's, it's like the only like how only way I keep in touch with my like South African people. Oh, okay, because yeah. I mean I'm sure like if you've been around Americans for so long to hear like a local accent, someone's like oh. So Thank you. At like that point, every we have year to, uh, mm -hmm. on Youth Day, they have a major oh, crazy. festival. Okay, uh, just South Africans and South Africans from literally all over the country will come yeah. to, let's say Jersey, because yeah. they had it twice in Jersey so far. Mm -hmm. And you just see it, it's so nice to be around your people. They fly in artists from South Africa. It's oh, that's so dope. nice. Uh -huh. That's actually it's really cool. They close down into either an entire park or entire street, and mm -hmm. it's just South Africans everywhere. It's amazing yeah and at that point we ha we have to eat everything mm -hmm. yes um the first time we went I, I, we went to like three different stores where 
oh, you have to eat this. Oh, you have to. But eat there that. wasn't a festival. It's more, more like a South African market where you okay. can just yeah. buy like different places. You can just buy stuff. Like but stuff from here, obviously. Yeah. So I made him try bunny chow. What did we try? What did Ooh, we buy? That's a good one. Yeah, it was, was decent. It was a. Uh, it was a little overwhelming. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we bought some and then we left, and yeah. I was like, oh, we need more. So no. we legit were on the highway and we turned around. To get no, home. we were on the highway and she made us turn around. Yes. That's the difference. <laughs> we turned around because so of... I, I, I'm looking at what you're saying because you said the bunny chow is overwhelming. Cause you're, like you, you're holding it like you would hold a burger. So that's not essentially... That's generally not how we would eat it. So like, you know, I, I'm assuming that it's the same in Haitian culture where like when you eat food with your hands, you've got to uh, break off a piece and then eat it. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 So I know a lot of... A lot of um, Less Western, less Westernized cultures, except for Asians, because Asians eat with chopsticks. But like they eat with their hands, like you yeah. break off a piece. Mm-hmm. So that's essentially how a bunny chow should be like consumed. Yeah, most totally times. Take the but we just do the same. Like you roll the packet back and you're just like, <laughs> do it. Yeah. Listen, yeah. it's in bread. Yeah. I can hold it. <laughs> I'm gonna bite it. <laughs> so okay, you had yesterday. A bunny my cousin mm. made rutis and he had. Ooh. Yeah. That's also like a staple. Oh. <laughs> it's a staple around yeah. <laughs> especially if you especially if you know um okay, if you know colored people but more so if you know Indian people. Okay. Yeah. Or if if people have like Indian in their bloodstream. So like with me I grew up eating rutis all the time because my granny was Indian. So that was like regular for me. Okay. But other people are like, "Oh, rutis are amazing. Oh, I love when we have them like when you have them. I have it every Saturday." <laughs> like it's normal <laughs> at supper to us on a Saturday afternoon like, uh, like for dinner time we'd have like Rutis and like whatever stew or whatever she made. Mm. So that was like regular to us. But rutis are good, especially like when they make it properly and the curry's really good. Yeah. But but, but no, you had yeah. how many did you have? You said four. Yeah, then it must have been delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were just super I'm, hungry. I'm very open minded when it comes yeah. to trying to other people's culture. Don't get me wrong, I love my culture. I I, mm. yeah, I yeah. love my culture, but I love exploring. Yeah, it's culture. everything. I love going to the unknown mm-hmm. uh, and and find out what you know what you do at your house. You yeah. know, uh, what do you eat? What you know what's you know, what are you yeah, doing on he's Saturday very morning? open to everything. So did you, okay, but uh, since you are like that, did you try and implement like Haitian culture in like your guys' home? Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Yeah, Eden, you cook, so I don't cook. Eden and Duke are like <laughs> essentially I'm half Haitian, so I'm they should have. I'm the cook in the house. If yeah. I, and if I cook, you're eating Haitian food. Yeah. Unless uh, we decide to make so burgers. good. Yeah. So like good. when I had, I had to put her on, because uh, when I met her, mm-hmm. she was, uh, she's, she's an au pair. Mm-hmm. And she's living with all these white people, eating very processed stuff. Because yeah. they don't cook. They were Italian. They were eating a lot of pastas, mm. pizzas, you know. But like microwave, like oven pizzas, where like they don't make it from scratch. It's like a, it's they like would a usually order pizza. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. they usually order pizza, or they'd like we'd make like pasta or whatever. Mm. Yeah, um, but when I met her, she was eating. You know, there's some days where you know you had a ham sandwich. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it, I was like, no, let me put you on. Like, yes, I eat out every day. True, because mm-hmm. where I was living. Yes, I had access to a kitchen, but I didn't. I don't. And I wasn't cooking anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes, I eat out every day, but I eat cooked food. If you go to these restaurants, those restaurants, mm-hmm. you can get for ten dollars. You can get a plate, you know, with some some rice, some legumes, some sauce pois. I'm, I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> a beet sauce. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying sauce pois because I'm thinking it. In That's the Asian name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, the name in Creole, essentially. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, so good. everything is so good. You know, I'm you can get that. And then when I as soon as I put her on, it was like, it was over from there. Mm-hmm. It was over from there. I was like, hey. They, and within the area you live in, you get Jamaican food, Dominican food, Haitian food, Peruvian food. Mm-hmm. You, you get so many ethnic food you can get. Yeah, there's also right. a lot of Filipinos and mm-hmm. like, like Filipinos. Asian food. You could get. Ooh, the Vietnamese. Yeah, you get Vietnamese mm, love food. It. Oh, you cool. get all that. You don't have to eat anything that's. You could get something that was prepared and made. Yeah, from right? ingredients. From yeah. ingredients, mm-hmm. right? And cooked. So you don't have to eat like this. Yeah. Let me show you where to go. Yeah. And then. <laughs> I, we went through a period where I kept ha- I kept getting her to try um, Haitian food that I like. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, one day we eat this, we eat we eat you know spinach, and then the next day we eat. I would have to show it to you. It's not exactly spinach, mm-hmm. but we kept but trying enough. different mm-hmm. foods mm-hmm. until you know until I got to the one that she didn't like. But either either way, she she would love <laughs> the taste sometimes, but not the consistency. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's, all, it's all vegetables. And it's good, really it's good. vegetables, but yeah. One I thing can't I cannot eat, though, mm-hmm. plantains. Absolutely. What are those? It's like, you you know, like the bananas, and they look like bananas, but uh-huh. they are 
huge. I was surprised. And they fry it. Okay, you know some what? Some are sweet, okay. some aren't sweet. I've heard the name, but I've, I've that I was a culture shock it. to me. That mm-hmm. was a culture shock to me. She was like, she and I, you know, I was like, what are those? And those are plantains. Like, what are those? I'm like, wait, well, you don't know what plantains are? Mm-hmm. And I was. She's like, no. They don't have them in my right side of the world. I was like, for real? You've never had <laughs> I've never had it. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. Where are you from that they don't have plantains? <laughs> so like, is it like that's what I fruit? knew. It's a vegetable. It's a vegetable, it's but a vegetable. it looks like a banana. It looks like a banana. It looks, it's huge like a banana. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You guys can like search it up. We'll Google it. I'll yeah. yeah. like, we'll throw like, a picture up in the yeah. editor. <laughs> there's, mm-hmm. green, there's green and yellow plantains. Okay. They do not taste like bananas. Yeah, they, are they okay. so hard. Mm-hmm. One day okay. I thought it was banana and I just grabbed it as I was walking out the door. Mm-hmm. And I opened it and I could not bite into it. I was like, Damn. why is this banana <laughs> so hard? I was like, okay, no, it's not a banana. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's a staple in our culture uh, and, and many Hispanic cultures also to eat like fried yeah. plantains. Yeah, you fry mm-hmm. it. You fry them, you, you squish, squish, them. squish them. So basically like chips. Oh, crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not nice thing. to me. I'd l- okay, right, well, so nice. if, if at like, some point I'd love you, to try it. It's like, you've never heard of plantains? And then I was, and I had to step back a little bit. It's like, okay, maybe not like, every damn. fruit exists in every, because I, I'd, I'd assume at least mm. if it wasn't indigenous to South Africa, that it was imported. Mm, yeah. Some Somehow, some way. But like, clearly I'm not the only one that doesn't yeah, know. Well, clearly. <laughs> I've heard of it, but I've, I've never, I've, like even at like, because we have, we have a store, um, all around South Africa called Woolworths, and they, they import a lot of, like... So we have, like, you know, not far from where Marie lives, there's, like, a, sh- a shop called ShopRite and, like, Spa. And so they will sell, like, the general, like, that you would so find. And you can find, like, things. all these kinds of groceries at these particular... But Woolworths, or what we call Woolies, they sell stuff that, like, you could... It, it's imported. Like, you, would, you wouldn't really find it anywhere else. Besides, and I haven't even seen it there. But I've heard of... Uh, Plantains. Plantains yeah. yeah. I've heard of it, but I've never actually seen one in front of me. I've, until you describe, I, I, I believe would. they do <laughs> most likely make it like in West Africa and stuff like that. But Probably. Possibly, but we I don't but I don't I don't know. Not yeah. I here. I I've let it go already. <laughs> <laughs> let I, it I, I I I tasted it one time. Didn't yeah. like it. I don't eat it. Okay, so my son loves it. I think <laughs> it's Asian blood kicking in. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah. everything. Yeah. So when you okay, no, I wouldn't say when you guys got together, but like you guys were like obviously dating for before you got married. What Not were really. the culture shock for? Like, what were there any things w- that when you found out about like Haitian culture, like what what Eden's does, that was like this is weird, or like you were to be like okay, I have to get used to this now, because clearly the hookah was like a thing for me. It was like damn, this chick really loves this hookah. <laughs> 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 but for then again, that's like a color t- culture thing, down yeah. Now. Yeah. For me, it was more about family. Ah. Uh. You know how we are about our families. Mm. Yeah. Like we all, are, everyone is integrated into everyone's lives. You know everything about your family. Yeah. You're always visiting your cousins, or your yeah. aunts and uncles. They don't do that. Mm. Like they see each other. Like now and again. When it's a birthday party or an event or whatever, like mm. we'll drive by his dad's house. Knowing his dad is home, we won't go in. Oh and wow. Like, why would you not go see your dad? Yeah. And it, you know it bothered me at first. Like I would mm. tell him you need to go see your dad. Mm. Because we'd live in New York where his dad lives too, but we wouldn't see his dad. Mm. And it bothered me a lot, like, because I'm so about my family. Mm. And they're not like that. Yeah. So that was I mean, a I, I know that shock to besi- me. Besides that, I know that you guys are very about your family. Like, when we were younger, and I, like, let's say there was, like, some event happening around town, and I'm like, I mean, it's like, hey, are we going? I'm like, yeah, cool, we're going. I know that when I go to fetch Marie, I'm not just fetching Marie. I'm fetching Marie, I'm fetching Sammy, I'm fetching Shante. Whoever else, is, yeah, Charlie, they, we're all we all can it be that we all going together because like they, me not me kind of, but also like my family does we're not as close knit, but I know that they like a lot of, in South Africa especially around color families like they are super close knit so like they always spend time together even like Sunday lunches it's not like yeah. just you and your guys in the house like you it's have usually one at the grandmother's house yeah at the whatever. granny's house and like everybody they don't do meeting. that yeah. and they don't also have su- not just the Asian thing but in America they don't have Sunday lunch. Like we have full Sunday lunch. Yeah, they okay. don't sit down and eat, and then everyone chill afterwards. You get the itis, and then you go. To sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that. Yeah. They will have like a normal day. You it's have like breakfast, you have lunch, and then you have dinner. Like dinner is your meal for the day. So that's like, like the full we, plate kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, we have our lunch. And yeah, then su- Sunday like midday lunch yeah. is like the plate. Yeah, around well, it's especially in brown households that's like the thing it's like you have to have like the whole Americans don't do that. starches and the yeah. and the everything so that's like uh interesting 
They don't the do family's that. not a big thing over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, not, not to really. everyone. No, not not really. Like the families I worked with, they were all about their families. Mm. Like they are not families, but more so their kids. Yeah. Like they would legit just call out of work to just if the kid had a tantrum, I would call them and be like, "Hey, this happened." They mm. would leave New York City and come home. Oh damn! And just be with the, the kids. kids like yeah, because something. A, the kids happened. having a bad day. They don't care if they have to leave work or whatever. Same with Tiffany. Them like. Even though both of them, like my host mom, mm-hmm. they um, both of them had really like a lot on their plate all the time. Mm-hmm. If the kids now had a Halloween thingy thingy at school, mm-hmm. they would stop work for the day and go to the school just so they can see the child in the costume and then go back to work. Oh, crazy. Like they would stop everything for their family. I think, it's more so about okay, my immediate family to them. Okay, yeah. Then it is about. So like they wouldn't do that for like a cousin or something. No. But <laughs> if, it's like, if it's like the child. Yeah. Okay. But what I loved, right, about like his family with my with my um, fr- friends and family with my kids' baby showers, we were so far away from every ch- everyone. Everyone still like came. drove to a plus hours to come see us mm-hmm. because it's like okay, it's Eden's child. When last we see Eden's, we, I want to oh, meet the cool, baby. Yeah. So everyone still came. They still made it a thing mm-hmm. to come see him. I love that. Because we don't see your family that often. Well, yeah. Um, to piggyback on that, is, is, it's basically uh, it's American culture that's mm-hmm. kind of like spread it apart like that, spread the family unit apart like that, mm. to the point where like you have to make it a point to go see people. Mm-hmm. Otherwise... Is it like that, though, or is it different in the South? Well, I don't know. I feel like it's m- family is more like bigger in the south. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, what I know is that once you move out, you have your own family, you have your own place, you have your own stuff to worry about. You're out, you have your own bills to pay. Bills take over everything. Mm-hmm. So you're basically just managing your week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think people, everything is scheduled out. And people probably respect the that. They're like, okay, you yeah. and Maria are doing their the thing. Just they're busy, them. which yeah. which can yeah. happen. Where like I work five days. By the time I, I'm off on a weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, I'm just looking forward to just not doing anything because mm-hmm. I've been working all week. All week. Yeah, it's like so your time to like actually rest and yeah. And so now, if I don't make it a mental note to go mm-hmm. see some somebody, like I won't, like it won't yeah. happen. It's like it has to be deliberate. Yeah, mm-hmm. it has to be the culture. Or like there the must be a reason more based yeah. around like working. Yeah, ha- getting earning money, blah, taking care of your immediate family. It's not. Okay, I need to go see my grandmother today and tomorrow. And blah. Yeah. Everything is so scheduled out. And I think that's where, like, I never used to be like that. Mm-hmm. Wait, my whole life needs to be scheduled. Since I became a mom, a lot has changed. Maybe before. Yeah, it's just. Since it's I just became an au pair, let me say that. Because mm-hmm. everything is so scheduled out, and that's just their lives. They have mm-hmm. to schedule everything out like a like week according. in advance. Oh, crazy. So, yeah. and then also with my family specifically. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think it's something um, uh, Haitians and, and colored people here have in common. Mm-hmm. When, if, when family is close, right? We live on top. We live close to each other. Mm-hmm. Eventually, a lot of gossip happens. Uh-huh. As kids, don't we know about that? As kids, we grew up. We grew up with a lot of. Mm-hmm. We, saw, we saw a lot of petty fights happen because of petty gossip. Mm-hmm. So as we grew up, it's like it was like PTSD. We wanted to no. just be away from it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, PTSD, yeah. It's like it's like weird okay. me. You know, you don't know how many of my of my cousins, aunts and uncles, kind of applaud my move to PA. It's like, hey, I'm, you married your wife, and you stepped away to be with your wife. Because you know? all of them came from Haiti, mm-hmm. went to New York, and years later, still in New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like living not far dad, away from each other. The brothers, mm-hmm. cousins, everyone is right there. So, so okay. like the kids, my generation. Is is everyone is off somewhere, yeah. very far from where we grew up. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jane is like Atlanta. Yeah, it's like it's like it's oh, it, and that has a lot to do with it. Where I I, th- I feel like I don't know what my what my siblings would say because mm-hmm. I know that for a fact about my cousins. Some of my cousins, part of the reason why they live further away is because they don't they don't want to deal with the with the gossip, with family mm-hmm. gossip. It's not like we don't love each other. Yeah, but it gets messy sometimes. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not like we don't love each other. We, we you know we we come together. Like me- you mess with one, you know, and then mm. another one finds out about it, and you can always find and help. It's the snowball, just yeah, yeah, you can always find help. I can always call any of them, like, hey, I'm having this problem. Would you be willing to be, be willing or able to help me? And then yeah, I'll always find help, regardless yeah. of the fact that I haven't 
seen, seen them in like in a year. Yeah. yeah. In a couple of years. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, five it's, it's years. Like they're still cousins that I've still never met. Yeah. Mm. It's cousins. Even though they ride there in Jersey or whatever. Oh, crazy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. It's it, a lot. That has a lot to do with it. So, so basically, a little bit of family drama mm-hmm. kind of started it, but but life in the United States and mm. expanded on it because mm. everyone's always thinking about bills. Yeah. Bills are paid every month. Mm-hmm. Everyone's always at work. <laughs> always yeah. like yeah, right. So to make like we have to make time for you. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. you're so set in your normal weekly schedule of like it's yeah. work. Yeah. Kids have to go to school, come home, sort out things at home. You know. And then, like, and then repeat it for the rest of the yeah. week until the week and in the week and it's like I gotta yeah. catch up on rest and like yeah and for us else. it's like particularly difficult because he works weekends when everyone else is off oh. so it's either Eden's is gonna like in advance ask for time off or to be at his birthday or so we yeah. can go somewhere mm-hmm. like we have to go back home and then well, it's one of his friends' his kids this first birthday oh yeah like the weekend we get there damn I'm calling out of work you know something that we marie and i spoke about this because we went out for dinner that one time but like something that we i I actually want to bring it up on the podcast because a lot of people don't know this but like so i find that there's one thing that i find weird is that if i was the one who moved if i moved over and i did my thing i probably wouldn't have come back with a south african wife or girlfriend because i find that to be so strange like you're going (laughs) thousands of kilometers away from home you're meeting all these people in this foreign land and then you settle down with somebody that's from here as well i don't think i'd be able to do that because like so like that's why like i wanted to bring you guys on because she found like a haitian dude you know she didn't just find like a regular Af- african-american guy she was like ah let me i'm, I'm in a I like the exotic but let me import <laughs> my dude even more like from somewhere <laughs> so from somewhere else because like i know guys who like i know people who went over to the states and um even like other countries like Dubai, and then they, they settle down with South, South Africans. Africans. And I'm like, well, yeah, cause I think at that point it's, it's because you're looking for something familiar. Something, maybe. Something from home. Yeah. You know, and it, but, and, and I'm, and I'm not even gonna lie. It's, it's easy. Don't get me wrong. I, I love my wife and, mm-hmm. and, Better. and, <laughs> <laughs> and oh I came in, I came, I went to, I left the States when I was, I left Haiti when I was 11, 11 young, when I was 11. Um, so I can, it's easy for me. I speak more English now than I do Creole. Yeah. It's bad to say. Yeah. Right? We spoke about that before, yeah, that you yeah. don't, you barely speak Creole. Now. But, but for some people, it's just easier. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, you with, if I'm with another Haitian, that they'll get the jokes, they'll yeah, get yeah. The, the subtle way that I speak, the way that I do things. Mm. It's like for people, it's just easier to looking for something familiar, especially if that they have been in the country yeah. um, for a long period of time. So I don't know. Would Marie still want to, you know, date somebody that's outside her culture if she had been in the U.S. for like 10, 15 years dating other people? Mm-hmm. And then finally meet a South African. I'm like, oh, my God. Wait, you got, yo, your mommy cook sisters today. Let's go to her house. <laughs> and you were in New York. Yeah. Right? It's like, but then you, you'd have to just adapt to the person's personality then because, like, there's not much to learn about them. Yeah. Like, because you guys are to, okay, granted that you see, you didn't have to learn about her culture as much because a lot of the culture things that you saw were similar enough to yours. And, like, like yeah. you know, so, like, you just have to adapt to her personality then and, like, yeah. get to Which know her as a person. Tough, because I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I specifically left South Africa because I didn't feel like South Africa was not South Africa, PE. Mm was home anymore and i just we had a long conversation about that before yeah. We left, yeah and i just i needed change like i was still in a relationship when i left south africa mm. and very toxic relationship mm-hmm. and i <laughs> <laughs> to uh-huh. me i feel Anyways. like even if he didn't cheat on me mm-hmm. oh wh- like while i was here he was cheating on me and stuff i always took him back but if i didn't leave the country yeah he'd be in this constant loop i would him. yeah i mm-hmm. would have most likely still be with him i would have still gone through everything but Damn. i left he cheated and i was able to get out of that because mm-hmm. he's not there for me to like sit down and have a conversation yeah. with me like you cheat you know never mind forget all that but, but yeah yes, i n- i needed a change so when i broke up with him i was able to just like not be free and <laughs> do whatever mm-hmm. but experience different things mm-hmm. different people yeah i get that i know what you mean yeah, because i i I mean, as much as it's not a small town, like there is the thing that 
people in PA have. It's called, well, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called small town mentality. Yeah. Where it's like, they feel like they trapped you. It's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. It's like, you don't have to. Like, um, I had a friend, Megan. Megan and I were talking one day. Hey, shout out, Megan. Um, when she came down for when her dad passed away and we're talking and stuff and then she was telling me that people always assume that because she was living in America and then she was living in the UK and yeah. doing all these things with her life. Like, yeah. I mean, she's not really doing the modeling thing anymore. Yeah. But um, when we were in high school... You know you Megan. Know, you, I asked him if he um, remembers, but he, he doesn't remember. Megan, her uh, husband's a chef. You didn't meet her, but I took they Duquesne to for house. a play date. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we all uh, went to school together, right? Okay. But, like, she was saying, like... She, she literally, like, we were standing in the front yard having a conversation one day. Um, and then she's like, Kev, can you tell me what the difference is between me and you? Because we went to the same primary school, we went to the same high school, we live in the same area, but I just made the conscious decision to be like, I want this for my life and I'm going to yeah. do this and I'm going to go ahead and do it. And she is living overseas for like how many years now? Yeah. So it's like, if you don't break out of the little small, mi- that's small town toxic mindset of your own, then you're going to be stuck here. Because, I mean, you just made a decision one day, like, okay, cool, I'm leaving. And I was like, what? what <laughs> but mine wasn't leaving? even, mine wasn't uh, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to the States to stay in the States. Yeah. Because in my mind, I was still with this person. Yeah. I was going to come back to this person. Yeah. Like, we had our whole lives, like, planned out. Oh, I was going to be in the States for a year, mm-hmm. maybe two years. And then I'll come back. He was going to save up. I was going to save up. We're going to get our own apartment. We're going to get engaged. Or, like, All we had jazz, everything yeah. set up. He fucked it up. Mm-hmm. And then I end up making, meeting him. Yeah. So and then, then my whole life changed. Yeah. yeah. Everything had to happen the way it happened for me to be here. Yeah. I get that. But I'm just saying, back to what I was initially saying, like if I had to go over to the States, yeah, we had this conversation. <laughs> Mexican girl. <laughs> thousand percent. It's like oh, my yeah. flavor. Your girl kind of looks. Exactly. You know, kind of looks like I mean, them. I mean, she knows. She, we, we've had the conversation <laughs> because I think we had the conversation the first time you guys were like, she would not be in trouble if we had to go over to the States and like, do you, <laughs> We so went to a place and there were like chicas everywhere. I wouldn't be like, so it's over and just go there. I wouldn't do that. But yeah. like, if I was the one who went over to the States and I was like living there, nine out of 10 times, I'd have, I would bank on the fact that I would have, when I came home, I'd have come home with a Mexican wife. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys like went over, if you guys, over, if you guys went over together, you'd be in trouble because all the men would be with her. Probably. I, don't care about she, you. I mean, she also has that, <laughs> that, that look. To I'm like, cool. <laughs> but as long as she's cool with the fact that I'm going to be like, you know, yeah, do your thing. Mexican Just girl. understand the Candace will get all of them. It's I like know, that I for know women. That. I know Honestly, that, yeah. it, I, I felt like I felt like I I think Marie felt the same way for a while. So the way we met felt like kind of like serendipitous. Like like it was oh, like yeah, by design. Like a lot of things had to happen or not happen for us to meet. And if even one of those didn't go with the, according to plan, we Marie and I would have never met. Yeah, that, that's how we felt. That's how yeah. we felt. Even how she ended up. Uh, living, she she was in she was an old pair. She had different choices of of families she could have gone mm-hmm. work for. Ended up working for somebody in New Jersey, and from there down the street from me. Okay. okay. Um, and 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 uh, and and me like I had a you know bad ex. Mm-hmm. You know that that ended up badly. But even the day we met, right? The day we met, we met we met grocery shopping. Mm-hmm. I remember that story. Yeah, yeah we met, we met grocery story. shopping. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you why I felt serendipitous, mm-hmm. right? So you can give the, you can give the viewers like a quick run, like a synopsis of the, the, that story. It was that, very quick. Was a, Everything that, happened guys, very quick. There was a look, yo. Even like I'm yeah. not like the most romantic guy on the planet, but even I was like, damn, that's a beautiful story. So, <laughs> I was like, damn, so, that's a so, nice story. So about like you guys met before that. Even before we were comparing, like how we ended up mm-hmm. so close to each other to me, and we're like, mm-hmm. oh damn, uh, you could have ended up. Halfway across the country, and we would have literally never met. Mm-hmm. But even even before we started talking about that, but the way we met, she was grocery shopping mm-hmm. with a friend. With a friend, mm-hmm. and I'm there, and you know, in my own, I was in my zone, mm-hmm. all right, because I was over a breakup, uh-huh. okay, and then I'm I'm just doing me now. I had my headphones on, just chilling, mm-hmm. had a Pokemon T-shirt on, <laughs> and, <laughs> yep, <laughs> and then and then. The area I live in is very mixed. Very, it's pretty mixed, but pro- mm-hmm. predominantly white. Uh-huh. Okay, and she noticed me because I just happened to be the only black guy in the store at the time. Uh huh. Not all the time, just at the time. At that time, <laughs> yeah. And uh, she noticed the, the Pokemon T-shirt I was wearing, mm-hmm. and asked I, me. I also had like three boy host kids that was right? like, uh-huh. yeah, that was obsessed with Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So she asked me, 
where I got the Pokemon t-shirt from. Mm-hmm. And the conversation started off of that. And then we spoke briefly, and I noticed her accent. Mm-hmm. So we spoke briefly about, um, I asked where she was from. I was like, hey, I noticed, her. Asked, what are you from? She said, South Africa. And then at that time, I was trying I was trying to travel more. Yeah, and I was like, hey, I've, I've been to this place, that place. I hope to visit South Africa one day. Mm-hmm. I was still telling you about Cape Town as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you guys ended up going, and then, nice. And then, un- honestly, conversations like that happen for me quite often where mm-hmm. I speak to a woman. Like, we ended up, like, just, you know how you stand on a line mm-hmm. and then you speak. Make small talk, yeah. You make small talk, but it was it was kind of decent small talk. That mm-hmm. You felt like that should have continued. Mm-hmm. That happens to me pretty often. And usually I just walk away and go, about, go on about my day. So after we're done speaking, she got in her car, and I, I was done putting away my groceries. I'm putting away the cart. And the cart attendant walked up to me mm-hmm. from wherever the hell he was, walked up to me. He was like, he was like, she has a nice, she has a nice accent, right? I was like, yeah, her accent was pretty. He was like, why didn't you ask for her number? <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, he's like, why didn't you ask for her number? Mm-hmm. You should go ask for her number. I was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> like, we go get the like, and, no joke, this is the first time that, ha- that I've been in that setting mm-hmm. and I did I did something different. Yeah. And I walked back to her car. And I was like, hey, my name's Edens. Um, if you you live around here, mm-hmm. I'd yeah. like to show you around because mm-hmm. you said you were from here. If you're around here, I like there's a party this weekend. I can introduce you to some people. Mm-hmm. And that's how we met and the conversation started. Mm-hmm. But the the thing the, the element in that story is the, the card attendant. Honestly, yeah. after we got married, I thought about going back and shaking his hand. Because yeah. if he never said anything... This would not be happening right no. now. <laughs> None of this would be happening. Right? Because like and I a said, lot of other things. I wouldn't like be I said, an uncle. Like, uh, conversation, yeah. small talks like this, even mm-hmm. when you stand there and talk about something, uh, um, you have something related, was you speak to somebody, you meet randomly, and it was a decent conversation for five, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, that happens like to me. Yeah. It happens to me often. I just go. Yeah. Right. And that was the <coughs> one time somebody stopped me. It was like, no, go back, turn around. Yeah. Right. And and to and me, you I, got married. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I always <laughs> felt like it was kind of meant to be. Yeah. yeah. And then we started comparing, you know, our lives, and it was like, oh my god, I I I thought about going here, but I didn't. I came here instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so like, for, even for me, it was so different because initially I wanted to leave as soon as I finished high school. Mm-hmm. As soon as I turned 18, got my driver's license, I was going to leave. I mean, you stayed for like a couple of years after. Yeah, that, I only lived when I was 22. Lucky mm-hmm. I didn't, because if I had to leave and actually move to New York and meet you at that time in your whole stage, <laughs> 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 we would not have right. been. Yeah, no, it but happen. also, um, when I did leave, when I left South Africa, they, as an OPU, you have to go to training school for mm-hmm. like three, four days, which is in. I. I think it was in Connecticut at the time. Mm. I can't really know what it was in Westchester. White Plains, New York, baby. You were, White Plains. You were in, uh, what's that town right after the... The the, the bridge, the right? Bridge. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, yeah. Um, I went to training school and I went to a family in Jersey. And there was another au pair from Czech Republic mm-hmm. that went to my second house family. But things could have gone completely different where if I ended up going with her host family, which was my second host family. Mm-hmm. And I met him at that you time, to at 22. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it would have still been, yeah. you know, because I ended up going to New Jersey and then go to going to her host family, which she was in my training school. So we most probably ran into each other at training school. So mm-hmm. I knew her, but I didn't know her host family at the time. Mm-hmm. It could have easily been like, okay, I could have been her the time mm-hmm. with those family it felt like a lot of things just fell into fell place, into place. Mm. Right. Um, but um I, I was about to say something and i forgot <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, that's what, that's why like i i said tell the story because when i heard the story for the first time i was like that sounds like a movie plot like, that doesn't yeah. sound like a, a regular to story me, I, I felt like it felt like you know my ancestors from wherever yeah you know, came down and then took over that guy and like, yeah. you know what? This is the future. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. and he and was like okay. around, no, Eden, no, you're messing it up. <laughs> yeah. Go back. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> we also have like a, a lucky number that like aligned us, number three, right? Oh, my favorite number. <laughs> That's my favorite number. No, dead serious, number three. Yeah. Because yeah. well, my birth is on the 30th. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got married on the 30th. Mm-hmm. Um, 
his birth is in the third month. Mm-hmm. Well, um, your home address was 33. Mm-hmm. Tiffany's oh, was three. <laughs> There was just a whole lot of three numbers oh, okay. like that was of him and of me. And okay. then our kids, like a, a connection, yeah. Yeah, and our kids. I we were just talking about my our kids outside. How mm-hmm. we had basically had two ones two years apart, mm-hmm. where both of them conceived on the same day. Both of them had the same due date. Both of them had were same weight and same height at birth, but two years apart. Mm. There was just a lot of like, okay, we yeah. should. This is like this is how destiny. it's supposed to be. <laughs> and, and then part of, that's part of the reason why, because when I met Marie. Um, I wasn't looking for anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I but that's how it started. We were like, "Now nah, this is a summer fling." Yeah, mm-hmm. this is. I would, you know, it was like this is a fling. But what what surprised me was how different she was from other women I've dated. Mm-hmm. I, uh, okay, what what set it off for me that day? I, uh, it was the first time we hung out. Mm-hmm. First time we hung out, and then it was late. We wanted we wanted some some Wendy's. I'm like, you know what? Like to drive around late night when I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. Let's go get some Wendy. She was fine no. We that. were gonna get the the chicken, the Vietnamese chicken first, but and then we got closed. there. It was closed. Mm-hmm. So it it was it was this moment where we were sitting in the car after we got the Wendy's, mm-hmm. and there's been plenty of women in that spot before. And when I get the food and I give it to them, they immediately start eating. Uh huh. Oh, I remember the story. Yeah, you right. told me this before. Yeah. They mm-hmm. immediately, they immediately, which is normal for me. They immediately say, "Okay, we get the food. I'm driving. I can't eat yet." Mm-hmm. But they immediately started eating, and then and then I remember I gave her the food, and then I, I started driving, and I told her, "Hey, you know, you could eat if you want." And I remember her saying, "No, it's fine. I'll wait for you." I was like, "Huh? You wait for me?" And then you're like, "I think he likes me. He wants to date me." <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I've never had anybody say that yeah. to me before. I'm like, all right, all right, cool. All right, let's let's get back home and uh, have the supper and, yeah. and and eat this when chicken sandwich. <laughs> and then he was like, "What's chicken your ring size, by the way?" Just, <laughs> just so that I know. It was like you know, you know, when something is so new, it feels so good. You know, mm-hmm. it was like that that for me. And it's been I haven't felt like that since I was like 23. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, you you get butterflies and things like uh, that, like that. And it's like you know what, I need to. Quiet you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm talking to people about her a lot, oh. and mm. I don't talk to people about women I date. Uh, so that was like a, a sign. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. Maybe. Even his sisters was like, he never brings. I don't. I don't. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't bring. I don't bring women home. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I don't know. So like your sister will know you have a girlfriend, but just they have no clue who this chick is. Yeah. Or anything. Mm-hmm. My I sis, think my that sis, I think they know one have girlfriends. Girlfriend. They, they know one. They know one. There was one I ever brought around, but. Even even still, my parents would see women as they walked out of my bedroom. Damn. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> guys, nah, yeah. yeah, but it's mm-hmm. like it's not like you got introduced. You, you, mm-hmm. All you did was see her. Mm-hmm. You didn't get you didn't get introduced. Oh, yeah. it was Wasn't that Wednesday one. girl? Now it's a Thursday girl. Uh. <laughs> you didn't get, you didn't get, it's never been like that, babe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this, you know. Well, she's the first woman I've ever introduced to my dad, like ever. Oh, crazy! Uh, and my mom, mm-hmm. like you know, um, people, people. Well, there was one ex, like people ended up knowing, mm-hmm. but I didn't walk up to anybody and say, "Hey, hey this, this is, is my girlfriend." Mm-hmm. No, but people just just end up knowing her because she was around a lot. Mm-hmm. But um, she's the first one I officially introduced to my to my parents because I don't want I didn't want her to leave. And then wonder what if, and I, you know, I hate that feeling. Mm-hmm. I absolutely hate that feeling, wondering what if. And I don't do long distance relationships. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, nah, I we were not gonna have a long. No we, <laughs> we were gonna not so end far it. away. Yeah, I, you know, the waters. Like, I, mm-hmm. I hate the feeling of of like you know the FOMO feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially for something like that. Mm-hmm. And now a few years down the line, I'm wondering what if, what might have happened with this girl. I had a very great summer fling with. Mm-hmm. Like ah no you're not going, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he's still yeah. even though we like he didn't meet my dad in person he still need to he had to ask permission I was yeah. like yeah, that's, that's a, a non-negotiable for it's me like, yeah, that's a thing. you were going to call my dad and ask for permission it's like it was nerve wracking bro <laughs> 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 it was, like, was nerve wracking she was like I I know we're doing this but uh yeah you have to tell my parents yeah. I was like what it was like you have to you have to speak to my dad you have to ask for permission I'm like. 
you know that you bring you know, another chick guys bring it up i've never oh, i've heard you speak to marie's dad when we're all in the same company what do you call her dad like what do you address him as marius you call him by his first yeah. name yeah oh. well, well, oh, you, 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 he, he usually he, says okay. your dad he oh. wants <laughs> me to call him that oh he wants that right yeah both Uncle are wants him but to call, both okay. are better crazy it, and I must he call your mother mom or mommy yeah. oh, but, but, but me is is i've literally never called anybody but my dad dad yeah and it, it's it's uncomfortable for me to say it i feel the same way yeah even my <laughs> it's, even it's not even him mm. but even, even for for me as well like my mom with the last time my mom was in the states my mom was like why do you call eden's his father mm-hmm. eden's his father yeah. that's yeah. what i call him <laughs> yeah. eden's his father i don't say george i don't call him by his name mm-hmm. i don't say dad it's like no you must call him dad no It's that's like an old, that's a, an old or my word. children's grandparents yeah that's like <laughs> yeah. A, 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 a amongst brown cultures in in south africa more, i've seen i've seen it a lot in p where like when people get married you you call your in-laws Mommy, mom daddy. and dad yeah. but i was I, i i wouldn't do that either you know it's it's yeah. not even about him or anybody it's just me yeah you're comfortable like your comfortability yeah, level yeah i i completely like agree a, with you i feel the same way it's not like i, I wouldn't mind but I don't know. You have your dad. Yeah. Like, like my parents like, nah. don't consider him a son-in-law. They consider yeah. him their son. Yeah. Because I mean, technically. Yeah. You know. So does my dad is like, you need to call me dad, daddy. Mm. <laughs> but but <laughs> it's like I'm not and calling someone and daddy. And your father can be so I'm like I'm, I can hear him saying it. <laughs> I'm not calling someone daddy. <laughs> no, I can hear that. I can hear. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I'm only asking because like I've been in your guys' company <laughs> more than once, and I just, I realized yesterday actually I was like I've never actually heard Eden address your father like <laughs> unless people. I don't address his dad either. Like I've never heard him like s- call for your dad's attention, so yeah. I don't know what he calls or no. what you call her dad. Because like with, with Candice right now, I call her mother Auntie Gail, mm. but I call her dad Mr. Thomas. I promise you. It's been that way, and it's probably gonna stay that way because this is how that's what I feel comfortable with. Yeah. Like she calls my 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 parents are Uncle Gavin and Auntie Liesel. Yeah. That's normal for me, but I'm just like Mm-mm. I've always had a weird I've had a weird dynamic with parents. So like, whatever works. If I see that calling you Mister or Mrs. this works, I'm gonna stick with that because like it's keeping me like in the good books. I'm not gonna change that. I'm not gonna be calling you Mom and Dad later on or whatever either. Yeah. But like yeah. I think if we lived closer to my parents, he'd feel more comfortable eventually. Yeah, not calling them Mom and Dad, but yeah. like Auntie S and Uncle Maki. Yeah. Type of thing. He'd most likely end up calling them that. Yeah, because I mean, you have a better relationship, obviously. Yeah. And, like you guys are like in each, like you. He would have, he would have experienced the whole, the brown people culture of like being in each other's faces, like all, all the, the time. time. You eventually have to call out for them. You have to be like, "Yo, guys, listen. I know yeah. we're supposed to do something this weekend, but damn, like we're not gonna make it. Like I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing you. It's it's been real, but like we have had enough. But okay, I feel like we okay. We've actually touched on a lot, guys, and I actually literally have run out of time. But I do want to say thank you for coming. I know you guys traveled really far to be on the podcast. Yeah. All, the way, thousand, from, all the way from all the way from Pennsylvania, miles. a few thousand <laughs> miles. Um, but it, it was it was fun actually diving into like the whole situation with you two and like the culture over there, the culture over there. Well, it's kind of similar in any case, but yes, close enough mm. to to for that you guys didn't really struggle to be together no, yes. and make it work. But I appreciate you guys being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. It's like a couple of days. Yeah, yeah we leave on we Thursday. You guys leave on this coming Thursday. It's Sunday today, but like, yeah, so they leave in like four, four call, days. Let's call it four days. But I, well, I will keep in contact with you. Obviously, make sure you guys get home safely and stuff. But yes, guys, that has been myself, Kevin, my homie Eden, my homegirl Marie, for the Homeless Crusade. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.